So first of all, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. We appreciate that. So thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> So, uh, as a past president of uh, ASCB, what are you most looking forward to at this conference? A conference like this is an opportunity to network with old friends and meet new people who are working on some of the things that you are and make new collaborations. And uh, it's a way of strengthening the scientific community more broadly uh, by raising the ability of us to work together. One of the issues that's uh, important to you, I know, is uh, education, science education in schools. How would you say, how are we doing with science education at the moment? Uh, I would say we're not doing very well. Uh, actually, I think we've gone backwards under No Child Left Behind because of all the testing. Uh, either there's no testing in science that's, or, or there's generally bad testing in science. I'm not sure which is pref preferable. but. Uh, the fact is it's much easier to teach science poorly than to teach it well. So my theme for, for decades has been, this is not gonna really work. We can't make a, an effective science education system unless scientists are directly engaged, uh, not teaching, but supporting teachers in their local areas and helping uh, school districts make the right kind of decisions about what kind of science education to have. <laughs> So does that put the onus on the scientific community itself to get more involved? Well, I think it does. I mean, <laughs> some people will say that it's not our job, but I disagree because uh, you could argue, say the same thing about uh, other professionals, but I think especially for science, uh, it keeps on changing very rapidly. It can be degraded as it is in most school textbooks is to uh, uh, memorizing a bunch of facts about science, the whole push in science education in more recent times has been to get kids to understand how to think like a scientist, how to solve problems like a scientist, because the world's so complicated, they're being fooled all the time. Uh, everybody needs these kinds of logical skills where you look for evidence for statements. And if you think also uh, about our elections, so people are going to not be fooled by all these slogans, make decisions about issues like climate change, they have to understand what science is, where does this evidence come from? It's not just what scientists believe, it's <clears throat> what the world teaches us in this very amazing and sophisticated process of science, which is, I think, one of the greatest human inventions. Why does it matter that science is taught well in schools? Well, if, if we teach science the easy way, which is, I just wrote two editorials on this actually in a row in science this week and last week, uh, we teach it poorly as we often do because that's the easiest thing to do and that's the way that, uh, you know, t that, that some of the unsophisticated uh, pressures on schools are driving us, you know, teach to multiple choice factoid tests. If we teach science, that has terrible repercussions. First of all, it misdefines science uh, for, for everybody. They, people hate science. <laughs> they think science is just a bunch of memorization uh, of more or less meaningless and not useful facts. Uh, second of all, we're missing a great opportunity to develop skills in everybody that everybody needs to deal with the modern world. How to look for evidence, how to make sure that you're not being fooled by some internet scam. And, and even more importantly, how to make the right kind of decisions for yourself and for your family about every, all kinds of issues from you know, smoking <laughs> to, to you know, uh, is this uh, you know, mortgage I'm being offered, does it make sense? So, you know, to get the skills to analyze things, look for evidence. And today in our connected world with the internet, that's ever more valuable skill because you have all the information there, half of it's wrong, half of it's right. If you know how to use that information, you're really empowered to both be successful in your personal life, but also successful in the world of work. And everything being connected, as you say, I mean, it's also a very global uh, economy and uh, community these days, isn't it? So it's ever more important for America's position in the world that, uh, that it continues to promote. So. Right, well, so you know, President Obama, when he went to Cairo in June 2009, uh, tried to make a new opening to the Muslim world. Uh, he recognized that 
science, American science, is a great way to spread a better understanding of the United States. I was then appointed as one of the first three science envoys. I was assigned to Indonesia and Pakistan. And uh, I think that's a very valuable way to connect countries and build more rationality in the world. So I'm a big advocate for expanding that kind of a program to use senior volunteer scientists like me, and there, there are thousands of them who will be willing to do this, to, to, to help uh, connect American science and therefore the United States, and understanding the United States, to countries all around the world, not just only the Muslim majority countries, which we've initially started with, but all countries. Now finally, coming back to the uh, conference, there's an award named after you that's going to be given out this week. How does that make you feel? Well, this happened when I was young, and I, I was very embarrassed uh, to be, have an award na named after me, and uh, I, I made the point when I accepted it that after 10 years they should find somebody else. <laughs> and I, I was still going to make that, it's been more than 10 years now, but there, there are many people making uh, important contributions uh, to education, science education. Uh, among them are the current president, Ron Vail, who started this wonderful program, iBio Seminars. And uh, I think uh, the council should seriously think about uh, 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 having an education award, which I very much appreciate, but changing the name with whom it's associated every decade or so. Okay, well, well thank you very much indeed for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's such well, an interesting you. topic. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>